Rachel Hawkes here of Mindful Parenting and um, I wanted to do quite a big video today because in my private Facebook group which is called Mindful Tips there's been some really interesting um, comments coming in. Um, I put a post out asking people what they'd like me to cover and um, anxiety seems to be quite a big one. Now this is something that is really personal for me because for those of you who know me and for those of you who don't um, my daughter suffered really badly with anxiety she's getting better um, but there are tools that I have used personally with her that have really really helped so you excuse me <clears throat> I'm a bit chesty today Mia has very kindly given us all a nice little chest cold so um, excuse me if I'm a bit croaky it's a really complex issue um, with anxiety and I am in no way suggesting that I am a mental health expert because I'm not. But, like you, I'm a parent and I wanted to come on and share strategies that I know you can put in to every day and they can make a difference. Um, so anyway, without further ado, let's get cracking. So the first one I want to share with you was actually shared to me by a fantastic um, th uh, therapist called Sarah Johnson. So big shout out to Sarah, thank you very much for this one. Um, she's also done a brilliant blog on this, so I will at some point share the link to that as well. But it's a fantastic, tangible strategy and it's called your box of worries. In a slightly blue Peter moment, I have brought a little box with me. <laughs> Sorry to be a little bit blue petery, but there we go. Um, for those of you in the States, you won't know what I'm talking about, but you UK people will know. The idea is really simple, but massively effective. And what you do is you take time out with your child, um, away from everybody else. You actually designate a set, a set time to do this and you get your child to write down some of the things that worry them. You don't comment on them, okay? You don't kind of go, oh, really, you're worried about that? Oh, it's only homework, or you're worried about that? Oh, it's only your haircut. You don't comment, okay? You allow them to physically write down. If they struggle with writing, and I know lots of kids do, then you write them down. You put them, you write them, you cut them out, tear them out, and you physically put them in a box. Now, some people have a virtual box, so they think about the worry and they do it in a virtual way. So um, for me, I think the tangible element of writing them out is the thing that gives them power. Because if you allow your child the opportunity to openly discuss the things that are worrying, you can then address them. If you don't know what's worrying them, how can you address them? Okay, so that's point number one. It's really, really important. The second point is you need to allocate a particular time of every single day to bring the box out. Set a timer, that's what I did. Because the problem is once you open up this box, sorry, I'm getting very hot. Once you open up this box, how long is a piece of string? You know, you can spend a long time and the problem is the more your child gets embroiled in the things that are causing them anxieties, the more you focus too much on the anxiety, in my opinion. So allocate the time, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, okay? A time that you know you can fit in, you're gonna to get to see them, that they're not hungry or too tired. So for me, with, uh, with my daughter, you know, we picked like six o'clock, and we'd had dinner, she wasn't going to bed, and we closed the door in one of the bedrooms and we brought the box out, and we physically brought the box out. Now the idea of doing this is that you, one, give them the time and the space, which I've got to be honest, I think with anxiety is a really, really key point. We're all so busy, so many of us are working parents, we're juggling the work and even if you're not and you're, you know, for some reason, you know, I know people with three and four children, 
Now that juggle is enormous. So find the time is really, really critical. And then sit down. Now the thing is with this, there's a few ways you can do it. The way I did it was we randomly picked an item out. We didn't rummage through and go, right, what is the thing today? We'd pick one out and we'd discuss the anxiety. Now this is a strategy all in its own because you want to honour how they feel about the anxiety, but we don't want to reinforce it. So there's a line there. So for me, the angle I took was really based on CBT, um, and which is cognitive behavioural therapy, which is you allow them the space to talk about the worry. So I'll pick one. You know, I'm worried about um, the comments I'm getting on my hair about my haircut at school. I've made one up, by the way. And so you would go, okay, who is discussing this? How is it being discussed? Are people saying anything to your face? Is it behind your back? Is it, is it a real worry? Are they really talking about it? Or do you just hear people behind you talking and your name is mentioned and you think that's the issue? Or are they coming up to you and going, oh, what have you done to your hair? God, really, that looks rubbish. So however it is, you allow them that space to actually think about that because so many of the anxieties actually, I don't mean aren't real because obviously they feel that they're real, but they are things that most probably in our minds are so small that you can't understand how they're making such a big worry over something so small, but in their world it's big, okay? So we never, we never criticise that, that anxiety. We never go, oh, don't worry, you know, your hair will grow, or, um, you know, allow them that space to go, you know, I don't, I hate it because, you know, everybody talks about this. And then you can say, right, well, what's the worst case of this? You're getting teased a bit about your haircut. Do you like the people that are teasing you about the haircut? Inevitably, you find out actually it's the people that aren't necessarily even their friends. Does their opinion of you matter that much? So can you see where I'm going? You start to break down how they feel, how they feel about that response. And you start to give them tangibles to deal with that. So, you know, this week it's the hair, next week it will be because they're having braces. The week after it will be because their school shoes are looking shabby. The week after that it will be because somebody laughed because they fell over. It doesn't matter what the thing is, it's providing them with the tools to be able to look at that anxiety and go, do you know what, the people that are laughing at me, they're not my friends, they're not the people I hang with. So if they wanna laugh at me, does it really matter? If it is my friends, can I speak to them? Can I, can I take one member of that group out and go, I, I know I laugh with you when you do that, but actually, I don't like it. Can you stop? And chances are, when people actually get approached, even kids, they kind of go, and they'll make light of it, but it's another approach that gives your child the control. And that is the key. They can control their anxieties. They can find some strategies. And what we need to do is we need to break every anxiety down. And some of them can be quite big. Um, you know, it could be linked to appearance. So it could be, you know, weight, height. I'm not, the, I don't have the smartest clothes. You know, things that actually you kind of think, well, that's quite big. How am I going to tackle it? Break it down, okay? Break it down into ways that enable you as the parent to help your child have the tools to deal with how they feel about it, okay? So try it. I would say, pick a small box. This is really small, you know, shoe box. If your child has a box, I did this with my daughter, I allowed her to choose the box that she wanted. Now this is a box that she kept in her room. This is your box of worries. You are in control of it. You can put anything you want into that box. Now the lovely thing is, what starts to happen is, you discuss that worry. You might only discuss one worry in, in each session. And you go, are we okay with that? Or does it need to go back in the box? 
you don't control that they do because this that's what this is about okay so quite often they'll go back in oh i'm not quite sure i know i i hear what you're saying but i don't think it will work with my friends or um you know i can't control um you know the bus journey or or whatever it is the key is that we are trying to show to our children we can't control other people's behaviour and I really want to plug this out to you mums um, and dads out there this is a really really key thing and it's something that I've been working on personally because it affects adults in our personal life and in our business life you cannot change how other people behave okay I will keep reiterating it all you can do is control how you react and feel about it and that you do have control over it's a really tricky one to pass on to our kids but that's what we have to do okay that's we have to work on it and some kids just breeze on through but in my experience most kids need need help um, you know I've had a child who had horrific bullying um, and for those of you again who know me well to the point where I moved her school because the school just could not address the issues that were going on and it made her physically ill but her coping strategies were amazing absolutely amazing and it's all through these type of techniques so that's the first one I want to discuss with you because it's really really powerful and they can add things in so you know one day you'll go right okay well we've discussed that one shall we put it back in yes but I want to put something else in because this happened today and that's fine eventually you'll get to the point where they will hopefully either have an empty box which might be quite unlikely or they'll go I don't need the box today but again they have control over it which is a lovely thing to provide okay try it it's a really powerful tool sorry I'm going to take a little sip of coffee um, I should be having tea but I've run out so I'm on the caffeine I'm afraid <clears throat> the second thing that I have used with my kids for many many years is a technique called the negative sandwich um, a strange title but it works so I've got girls and um, they would come out of school every day oh, and this has happened and that's happened and it they remember as we all do the bad stuff okay but then you go oh, you know but what happened about you know your new project or the presentation or your friendships or and they go oh, yeah no that was fine um so something you can do every single day um for those of you who've got primary school children when you pick them up from school or they come back from school and you'll have an opportunity to sit down maybe with a snack after school or on the car journey do the negative sandwich so each child in turn Tell me one positive thing that happened today. And they'll go, oh, oh, doesn't matter how long it takes. Right, tell me one negative. Now the negative will go on, okay? You'll have a bit of time of the negative. And you let them have their the, the chat about it and you can add in your comments as, as, as we all do as parents. Of, oh, you know, don't worry about that. And oh, well, I'm sure she'll be talking to you tomorrow or whatever it will be. Or, you know, teacher shouted at people, it's all unfair. Um, that's fine again acknowledge it then move on to another positive so okay that yep yeah, we've got that that's done right tell me another positive what great thing happened today so what you're doing is you're allowing the outlay of the negative but you're reinforcing the positive so their end note is a positive thing okay so every single day for those of you with kids at secondary school and I know we end up, you know, timing ends up being really weird because, you know, they're back and they've caught the bus and they're really tired and they've got homework to do and then they want to get into a club or... You might not be able to do it every day. But if your child is going through issues and they're feeling anxious or there are circumstances out of control, I know there are quite a few of you out there who are, um, you know, either step-parents or you're divorced and you're splitting time you again I will put out there 
you cannot control how other people behave and that is the same for the adults okay what you can do is provide those tools on how your children react to it so beating yourself up because you can't be the one parent for everything you can't control that you provide the stability and that is great put these little moments in that can help your child acknowledge that they they also can't affect that but you want them to be able to control how they feel about it okay so try the negative sandwich it works brilliantly and you can use it for any age literally any age at all any time of day if you're out and you haven't you're taking the dog for a walk talk about it okay and the positives really work on the positives because they'll want to focus on the negatives so the next one I want to talk about I've got loads of tips so I'm not going to do it all in one video because I'm going to bombard you and you're going to be a bit like oh my god um because I've been really thinking about this this morning which is why this video um is popping in the group so for those of you who are watching this in my group the group is um all for mindful parents if you're watching this on a different platform please do come and join the private facebook group it is a really safe environment to put things out there it is facebook.com forward slash group forward slash mindful tips okay if you're watching this on instagram i will also put the link in if you're watching this on YouTube, I will put the link in the comments below. Um, it's a really safe environment, I will reiterate. You know, you put stuff out there, I will respond. You will not be judged. We are all in this together. It is amazing the stories that come out of how people are facing issues on a daily basis that the rest of us know nothing about, okay? So, um, the other one is affirmations. I know I keep going on about affirmations. I've got my principles here. Guys, use your affirmations. Okay, they are really, really powerful. Because what you say, you believe. So when your child is being told at school that they are ugly, and that is being reinforced by a group of kids, it is soul destroying to hear it. Okay or fat, or too tall, or um, you know, their braces are funny, or you know, whatever it is, kids can be horribly mean. And whatever your kid is hearing, you don't want them to believe that negative stuff. You want them to believe the positive. And affirmations are another tool that you can give your child, okay? So these are, um, I'm thankful for all I have. I'm just going to read you a few, okay? I'm going to put this in the Facebook group. I'm going to put this as a file that you can print and download. It is also on the website. And I've also got ones for older kids. Again, if you're in the private Facebook group, it's not available anywhere else, I'm going to put that file in. I deserve love and respect. That's a really good one. I deserve love and respect. I am perfectly imperfect. I love that one as well. So what you do is you get them to pick an affirmation every morning. We use an affirmation jar. I've discussed it before. You don't have to use an affirmation jar. Um, you can use a box. You can use a you know a sheet, and you know they pick out one and you cut it out that morning. I mean, who has the time for that? But if you want to. Um, a really nice way to use it is if your kids have lunches, you can fold one up and put it in the lunchbox and then they open it. I think that's a really lovely way to use affirmations. But actually the, th the key is you want your child to say these words. I am perfectly imperfect. What you say gets embedded in the brain and you believe what you say. Okay, it's been scientifically proven that the best way to reinforce those positive thinkings is to write it down and say it out loud. It really, really does help. And it's such a little thing. I am enough. They're really simple phrases. You can get really complicated ones as well and you can get much longer ones. 
um, and the ones for the older children are a little bit more complex in thought process and concepts. So I'm going to put those up in the group just for the private group as well. However, the other way of doing it is you make it a family activity and you sit down. We're the weekend here um, when this one's going to go out. It's a Saturday. Sit down. Have a discussion about it and write your own. Get your children to write their own affirmations and then choose what they want to do with it. You can also make it some mindful colouring, which I personally still love. I think regardless of your age, the simple act of colouring together as a family is just an absolute joy. Um, and I know quite a lot of you have got really creative kids. Embrace that. Don't just write the words. Decorate it. Own it. And then that becomes their little daily mantra. It is something that they can repeat. So when that person is saying something nasty, when they don't get picked up from school by a parent, they've been let down, uh, and you're get, getting a tearful call going, I'm standing at the gates and they're not here, can you come and get me? That's, they can use that. They can go, I am enough. I am enough. It takes practice, like all these things do, but our job is to provide them the tools, okay? If we make this part of our daily practice with them, we give them those tools. They just become second nature. You know what kids are like. As soon as you start doing something all the time, they just, they don't know, they don't know any different. They'll accept it. So the only embarrassment of saying these things is if we create that. If we, we as the parent go, oh, you don't have to say it out loud, it's fine. Say it out loud, own it. Yeah, you know, if they want to hide their affirmation, they don't want to share it with you, that's fine but just make sure that they have got it, that they get what it's about. And that only comes with making it habitual, doing it every single day. Personally, I think the best time to do it is in the morning. You start that day off. And no our mornings can be crazy, but taking two minutes to pick an affirmation that you've already got, you either use the printables or you find others online or you create your own. Okay, you make those and then they're just there. Okay, you don't have to fish something out, you don't have to draw something out. They're just there and they can own them. So I've got a lot more that I want to share with you, but I'm gonna leave you with those three today. I'm gonna to do another video um, and I'm gonna most probably post it up on Monday because I think, I mean, I've, there's so many tools that you can use. Um, but you need to start with one or two. You can't do them all in one time. Your kids will hit massive overload. And also, we've got to be realistic and know that what, what can we fit in? What is gonna work with our children? And don't poo-poo it before you've tried it. Don't go, oh yeah, no, my kids won't, they won't, they won't do affirmations. Because I have used affirmations with two-year-olds and with 15-year-olds. And I can tell you, they love them. And they're all a bit embarrassed, and they all pretend it's all a bit, you know, it's a bit uncool and all the rest of it. But secretly, they'll kind of go, oh, yeah. and you can see them start to think about it. Okay, so find a way that works. All three of those, okay, I use, I have used, and I can tell you definitely your kids will embrace them. Find the thing that works for you. If you can do all three of those, brilliant. If anybody wants to pop me a message about anything else or they're unsure um, or they want to know where to find anything, please do get in contact. Put a message on if you're in the Facebook group. Ping me a little comment underneath this video. Um, please invite other people to join the group if you think that this is of value for other people that you know whose kids are also struggling. There are so many children out there who um, either are anxious or they get anxious about particular things or actually their anxiety levels are right the way up there. Um, I would also like to put a shout out once again to Sarah um, from Cranio Kent for the worry box because um, that was a great starting point. It wasn't a starting point, but it's a big tool that we used. And I think um, 
those three together form a really great nucleus for you to start using. So, so I'm sounding very serious here this morning, but it's a really serious topic and I feel very strongly about it. Um, I hope those help. Please do let me know how you get on. And I will say again, if you want to reach out to me, do. I will make sure I'm available on all platforms over the weekend because there are bound to be questions that come up. Um, I'm sorry I've created such a long one here today, but you can understand my reasoning why. Um, good luck. Keep on going. You're doing an amazing job with your parenting. And don't forget, you cannot control how others behave. Okay? Lovely. I will catch up with you all soon. And bye.